Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Scott Schell and I'm a specialist in the Germanic languages. And today I'm here with my friend Robert Sass and he's gonna go ahead and talk to us a little bit about what Altsidu is and how it fits within the paradigm of Germanic heathenry. So first Robert, let's go ahead and just start off with what is Altsidu? Altsidu is a compound Old Saxon word. It is found in the Heliand. It means old customs or old ways. And I, as a Saxon heathen, also uh, that I love old ways heathenry of all the Germanic tribes. I felt it was the best word for us Saxon heathens and other old ways Germanic heathens to describe what we do. So you chose to use something like Altsidu because it's actually attested in the Heliand, right? Um, as opposed to something like Alsitru, in which case is more Old Norse, and that concept of like being true to the gods is, is really like an, an, an Old Norse word, if you will, but you found this actually in the Halion, right? Yes, I did. I actually found it in the Halion, and it was with Sven Nipschild um, in Germany. I mean, I had read it, I had showed him the passage, and he told me, wow, this is a great passage, and I, I think the word is great for what you're trying to do. So it was actually him that encouraged me to use it. And what better place to be exactly where Wittekind was, where the most famous Saxon heathen was, there with my sons in Germany on location. It, you know, it all came to fruition there and I decided that's the term I was gonna use. What, what makes Altsidu different from Alsitru? Well, we strive to do the old ways and historically attested ways. And we try to do that with um, several things. One, the holy days, the timing and their meaning. Also, bloat, reconstructing bloat from the historical sources and reconstructing symbol from the historical sources. I would also add weddings and funerals. Um, weddings are much happier than funerals, though I have done a funeral, um, but these are the, light, the things in life that are important for a community, those joyous occasions that uh, communities have that um, you know, are the important milestones or landmarks in a community's life. So some might also wonder though, too, as far as like, if you want to call them pantheons, if you will, what makes Altidu different? I guess from more of a religious perspective, focusing on like the gods, if you will, um, as opposed to something like Ossetru. Well, I don't know how much different in terms of just the pantheon. I would say we're more different from Ossetru in terms of the practice, but I will say as Saxon heathens, you know, some will debate if Freyr and Sasnoth are the same. Um, I believe that they're different, mm. but um, some would say that, you know, that's a pantheon difference. Um, and there is some evidence too that terms like the Vanir were not attested south of Scandinavia, but we don't know that for sure. And we certainly believe that the gods known as the Vanir were attested south. Um, so I would say from a, a gods and goddesses perspective, Woden is Odin, mm -hmm. Thunar is Thor, Sasnoth is just Sasnoth, um, and you know, Ing, um, I feel is a different god than Sasnoth. Okay. So, uh, you know, really I would say we have the same gods, we just might use the pronunciation and spellings attested on the continent, especially in Old Saxony. I can't stress enough though, that the biggest difference I would say between Altsidu and Asatru is the three major bloats a year mm. um, on the full moons um, following a lunisolar calendar, which even Celtics and other, if we use the term Proto-Indo-European peoples used. So the, the lunar solar calendar aspect really makes us different from Asatru and um, not following an eight-spoked wheel of the year um, with two solstices, two equinoxes, and quasi-midpoints, 40 and 50-day points mm -hmm. in between those four points. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I, you pretty much hit that right on the head. Um, as we do know that the Germanic tribes never even actually counted their, their days by the sun, right? They counted them by the moon. And for those of you interested in linguistics out there, even the word moon is actually directly related to, to the word month. And so, again, if you focus on the solar calendar, I mean, that's, that's great and everything, but as far as the Germanic tribes are concerned, um, they were really m more focused on that lunar cycle. And it wasn't really until the introduction of, 
well, I should say the, the cultural interaction with the Romans, um, that we had the, the solar calendar uh, become more dominant. Um, and it's not that we don't do other veneration when we feel like it. Um, we do, we do veneration whenever we want. Um, but I would also add though that um, we're not big into the kindred model. I really believe in a family-centered model. You know, we strive to teach family ritual first and foremost. So, you know, I do think the family is very important, but I like to t teach our, our groups in general that um, community veneration is a nice addition to family veneration, which is first and foremost. We, we do meet on the closest weekend to the three major bloats, mm -hmm. um, but often the exact date of the full moon. Um, we're encouraging our families. We, even in the past, we actually scheduled a Facebook event where the event was titled Everyone Worship at Home. I haven't done this in a while. I should do it all the time, um, you know, because I think it's a good idea to bring people together. Al Sadu is a light org, and what I mean by light org, we're not 501c3. Um, we're not trying to be super organized like a church would be organized. We're trying to be an educational hub and a networking hub. So we welcome scholars. We welcome lay scholars. We welcome people that just want to learn what the old ways are and people who want to network that have the same, in a sense, desires and goals for practice. I used to worry about which is better, Asatru or Al Sadu. But in the end, old ways versus new ways are just an individual choice. Um, they are very different to, to do modern ways versus bloat and symbol attested in the historical sources, but not everyone wants to follow newer ways and not everyone wants to follow old ways. So we're not in competition. Mm -hmm. I used to worry about competition. I absolutely do not anymore. I just want to find like-minded people and quality people and to be that free in a sense. Um, the education on our pages is free. Mm -hmm. um, so people can join and share and learn and all are welcome. And speaking of free, let's just stare at the camera for a minute. <laughs> um, as you, yeah, I mean, like Robert was saying, I, you know, the, this YouTube channel is free too. And the thing is, is that we actually put a lot of work into these things, right? I put a lot of work into my channel. Robert puts a lot of work into all to do and his website and the Facebook page and whatnot. And, um, you know, we just came back from our full-time jobs. Right, so it's, it's actually pretty time consuming, you know, that uh, you know, we go ahead and work our 40 hour a week jobs. For you, it's probably closer to like 60 hour a week um, job. And then we come here and do this video for you all and you know, just try to give you as much uh, accurate information as we can. And, and you know, we're both obviously very passionate about it. Um, so, yeah. I'd like to add too that that is a difference between monotheistic religions where, um, a priest is someone's living. You know, uh, in that sort of living, believe it or not, if you're a Baptist preacher and you've graduated from Baptist seminary, you have to teach Baptist ideals to your Baptist church or that Baptist church is going to fire you for not teaching Baptist theology. I do think that it's good that people do earn their living. I don't want to belittle any scholar that earns money. Oh, hell no. I'm jealous to a degree. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with selling good books, mm -hmm. um, putting out good material, but when one can earn their living away from the community, then they're truly free to really study the old ways, to really dig into what they are. And there's no monetary pull. There's no pull to be Baptist or Lutheran or heretical or non-heretical. Mm -hmm. It's truly trying to find historical sources, learn historical languages like Old Saxon, and to share that knowledge. And to do that on top of a day job, I really think makes Al Sadu free. And I'm not talking free from money. I'm talking about free from the constraints that monotheism and monotheistic religions do have when it comes to passing a plate and those sorts of things. Yeah. So. To be a part of our local community, we all bring food to bloat. We all pitch in for ritual. And 
it does make our local community tighter because we're all sharing with everyone. We get everyone's gifts and we encourage everyone to share their gifts with the community so all are important and all are sharing and, if they want to. And everyone is participating in the ritual, right? Um, uh, one more question for you, last final question here. Um, what do you see is the future of alts you do? Like, do you even see it going, I guess, do you have any future, I don't want to say goals or plans, but do you have any sort of like future visions as to, to where you're seeing this go? Well, I used to have grand plans. <laughs> I used to want heathenry to be the religion of the world, but we're not an evangelical religion. Yeah. Um, hence, I've shifted the focus to the families. Um, I think that our behavior is very important. We live in a very ugly world. And to, to live honorable lives and to show those who know us that those of us who love the gods in the old ways live honorable lives and make a difference in the world, that the world is a better place with us in it. To me, I think that is my grandest goal. I really truly believe the TV shows and the movies are falling short because it's showing heathens like in a soap opera constantly betraying one another. And that's actually the opposite of when you read the sagas. I'm not saying there's no betrayal in the sagas, but what brings kin together is keeping oaths and fulfilling the oaths and taking care of your family with honor, your sib with honor. And my grand plan, I know it sounds a humble plan, let's all encourage people to be honorable and to live honorable heathen virtues like in the Havamal and in other heathen mm -hmm. literature. It doesn't sound overly grand, but I honestly think it is the grandest goal. It's the highest goal. Um, it is monotheistic to worry about evangelicism and making yeah. more heathens out of people. It totally is, especially when you look at the variety with all the tribes. You look at the, the different local beliefs too. Um, England is a great example. So many different you know local belief systems. Um, sure, I don't want to also deny that there wasn't a pan-Germanic god like Odin, but you know, they, we need to also acknowledge that there will be variety and variety is actually what kind of makes it heathen. Living lives with honor um, is just so important. Mm -hmm. We live in a dishonorable world. And lastly, I should add too that Christianity's view was to make the world like Christ. That's what Christian means. Islam, you know, there's no God but Allah and no prophet but Muhammad. Islam is the goal to make the world Muslim. But a heathen mindset values multi multiple cultures. With the Sami, for example, they were Christianized very late. And I remember they reading about, probably in, in Dubois' work or something, but uh, they were flabbergasted as to why Christ could not simply be absorbed within their worldview and, and sort of incorporated into their worldview along with their other gods. Like they didn't understand why Christ needed to be placed above all, why Christ or the Christian God actually needed to sort of supplant everything else. And so that tells you right there from that heathen mindset from the Sami in this example, um, where they would have readily accepted Christ and God into their religion, but really um, Christianity you know, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, but I mean, it's the truth. It will supplant that worldview, right? It will supplant that religion. All right, Robert. Well, thank you for coming on this channel and giving us this wonderful conversation and just talking about Altsidu and heathenry in general. Um, you know, I'm sure that the viewers here have gotten a better understanding as far as like what Altsidu is and maybe even a better, wider understanding of heathenry outside of just Altsidu. So yeah, just thanks again for coming on and hopefully we can have you on again in the future. Thank you for having me so much, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks for all your old Saxon knowledge. It certainly helped me grow as an individual. So thank you. All right, awesome. Thanks, Robert.